Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at another Lamy pen and it's been a while since I've reviewed a Lamy pen on those pages right here but today is the day and today we review one of the, I think in my opinion, most interesting Lamy pens out there and one that for some reason I almost never see uh, out there in the fountain pen community, which is strange because as I said, I think it's one of the most interesting and, and, and one of the best Lamy pens out there. This pen here has been sent to me by Fontoplumo, Frank at Fontoplumo at Fontoplumo.nl in the Netherlands. Uh, thank you very much, Frank, for uh, having sent me this pen for review. I appreciate it very much. And the pen that we're going to look at today is the Lamy CP1 or CP1, as it would be in German. Uh, it comes in a very simple but very nice uh, Lamy packaging, cardboard packaging that they have made by Gmund Paper, uh, the company that makes that packaging for them. Just hold together with a rubber band right here. And, uh, you know, then you have the pen in here. And uh, I had... Uh, I have it in a extra fine nib. That's it. Very, very simple packaging, but completely does the job. Here it is, the Lamy CP1 or CP1. I already say it right now, comes at a very, very interesting price point of like 40 euro, uh, which is fantastic. It makes it a very very fantastic entry-level fountain pen, 40 euro, not a lot of money for a fountain pen uh, in the grand scheme of things. So very, very affordable pen. The pen is made out of metal, aluminium, I do believe, and it has sort of like a very, very cylindrical shape. There's no tapering whatsoever over the pen body. We look at the pen body now in detail in a second, but it's just a simple, small thin black aluminium cylinder. When you look at the pen, you see that the aluminium is sort of made, but does have a little bit of a surface structure. There is no finial, it's just a flat top up here with a small edge, as you can see right here. There is a ridge in between that you can feel ever so slightly with your fingernail. But by looking at it with the bare eye, you do not really notice that one. You then have like a aluminium clip saying Lamy here at the side, Germany under it, and the clip being spring-loaded. And you have like a little blob down here that is rounded and that will help the pen slide into a pen pouch or shirt pocket. And uh, yes, the pen does look very simplistic, very minimalist, very Bauhaus-ish. And yes, you guessed it, it is a very similar clip than the one of the Lamy 2000. And that is because the pen does have the same designer. Gerd A. Müller is the designer of the Lamy 2000 and also the designer of the Lamy CP1, CP1, and that is why the clip looks very, very similar. It's like the same kind of brushed aluminum material. It's a very, very similar, if not basically the same design language, just the rounding here is slightly different, which I find, you know, if you're a Lamy fan, then like the, the difference in these small details is very nice. Um, here we have them side by side, I do size comparisons in a second, but you know, that's what it looks like. It is a push on cap, looking at that in a second as well. And then as I said, you know, it's just a cylinder made structured surface material. And then at the end you have some kind of, a, I don't know if this is like a weird or odd construction, but there's some kind of like a plastic ring with two latches or something like that right here, which does serve to post the cap if you wish to do so. Uh, and then you have like a flat end on the other side. As said, it is a push on cap. Comes with the 
Z50 regular Lamy nib, steel nib. Uh, you could put a gold nib on if you would want to. This here is an extra fine, right? It's an extraordinarily nice extra fine line. Very, very smooth. It's probably one of the smoothest extra fine steel nibs that I have ever used. This nib happens to be absolutely fantastic. And then you have like a pretty short, here's my fingernail in comparison to it, a very, very short um, section which has some grooves right here, which help for the grip, which is kind of helpful because like this is a very, very thin pen, very slender pen. Um, I'll do a size comparison as said in a bit so that you get a bit of an idea about that. As said, you could post that pen by just putting it on here and then it sort of like snaps in place. The pen does become quite long like this. It's probably too long for me to be written like this. And it does also become a tad top heavy um, because it just gets so long. So it, it even though it's aluminum and it's pretty lightweight, it does weigh the pen back a little bit. And, um, you know, it's a very lightweight pen, um, as a matter of fact, because it's aluminum. And even in my slightly larger hands, this pen is plenty long enough to be written unposted. Um, the interesting thing with this section and this like step down right here is that that step down is obviously not a really huge step down. It's very smooth. So, you know, wherever you can basically hold that pen and treat it a little bit like a pencil. So, you know, you hold it wherever you find comfort. Um, unscrew the barrel and you know that Lamy convor converter with the black turning knob right here. That's the one that fits the Lamy CP1. And obviously you can also use the Lamy cartridges. And the ink that we have in this pen today is uh, Rohrein Klingler, Klingler Verdi Gris. Very nice. Let's do some size comparisons. As said, this pen is a very thin pen. It's not a short pen, but it's a very thin pen. That's what it looks like in comparison to Elami Safari when capped. And that's what it looks like in comparison to Elami Safari when uncapped. When capped, they're pretty much similar. When uncapped, the Elami CP1 is like a little bit shorter, but section comparison, you see, I mean, it's the same nibs as said, but do you see that the section is a very thin section. This is a very slim and slender pen. I won't post those pens because I would write neither of those two pens posted. As said, when it comes to the thickness of these pens, the CP1 isn't a lot more than a Blackwing pencil in diameter. So as said, if you like girthier pens, then I'm not sure if this is the pen for you. Uh, but interestingly enough, since it's so lightweight and since it's sort of like you can sort of handle it almost like a pencil, I do happen to like it, even though my pen size, my normal sort of like comfort pen size is sort of a Lamy 2000, Pelican M600, Pelican M800. That's sort of my, my pen size. Um, here you have it against a Waterman Waterman Hemisphere. I would think that that sort of also very, very comparable pen. It's probably also comparable to a Carandash Ecridor. You see, nah, maybe the Waterman is like a little bit girthier, but like I think it's sort of like the same ballpark. Um, and then finally, you have it against another much more expensive, but also quite popular slim pen, which is the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir. Uh, that one is like a little bit girthier, but uh, when it comes to the section, not that much. That's what those two look against each other. As said, again, maybe a little bit girthier, obviously a lot heftier because it's a different body construction, but, you know, kind of comparable. So that's sort of like the ballpark size of things that you're looking into when you look at this pen. Let's do a writing sample, as said, with this very fantastic uh, extra fine nib right here. Now it dried up a little bit in the course of the review. Also, Verdi Gris is a quite dry ink. Here we 
we go. The LAM is CP1. Extra fine nib. You do hear that it has a little bit of feedback. It's very, very smooth. So not scratchy feedback, just some feedback from the page. And you see, you know, that's what I said. Fine line, verdigris being a dry ink. There's literally, you know, no, no wetness at all, which to me is kind of pleasant. I'm a lefty, as you can see. So, uh, uh, overly wet lines are a problem for me <clears throat> but you know it does put uh, down enough ink for this to be a very very legible and uh, readable uh, line so that's very fantastic there's obviously no line variation to be had here with this with this steel nib um, let me just put so you see how fine it really writes actually this is the Heritage Rouge et Noir in, in fine. That fine is a paintbrush. It's very wet and it's very wide for a fine. But just so you get a real quick idea, you know, like here's a few pencil strokes. Right, so I mean, this is really a true to the size extra fine, I would say. Let's zoom back out. So that's that with this uh, pen and uh, with this uh, very nice nib as said, it's a set 50 so you can swap it out very easily to a gold nib or you know a broad or a medium or whatever may strike your fancy. Overall verdict, uh, I think this is a very, very beautifully designed pen. Uh, if you're a fan of the Lamy 2000, you almost have to have this pen as well to sort of complement the set as set by the same designer, Gerd Müller. This is a very robustly built pen made out of aluminium for 40 euro. I think it's a steel. Very beautiful design. I'm a fan of Bauhaus design and minimalist pen design, so I do like that one here a lot. So, you know, there you have it. Uh, I think this is a clear recommendation to look into it. I want to take the opportunity to once more say thank you to Frank at Fonto Plumo for sending me this pen for review. That's that for today, and I'll see you guys at the next review. Ciao, ciao.